What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We're back here on Madden 25 here once again for another rebuild and today we got to do a team that kind of had a little bit of expectations going into the season based off the aggressive offseason that they had. Hasn't resulted exactly where they want to be but today we're going to rebuild the Tennessee Titans in Madden 25. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you're new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. Let me just be on record to state this first and foremost when it comes to the Tennessee Titans. I honestly truly did not agree with the aggressive approach they had. I feel like they were just setting themselves up for failure. I didn't think this roster was ready to compete. Maybe if you have a different quarterback and Will Levis actually worked out, maybe things are different because he's not been very good. But I still didn't just love the approach of going after Legere's need. You got Chidobia Wuzia, you got Calvin Ridley, you gave all these contracts out. Um, and I didn't agree with it. I thought the Titans should be more in a rebuild, retool phase, but uh, they kind of just went for it. Um, which, again, I'm, I mean, on paper, there's a lot of good players here, but it just isn't resulting in wins for them. So what we're going to do, of course, as usual, is we're going to simulate the rest of year number one. Mason Rudolph has been the starter lately. Will Levis clearly is not the future of this team. Um, and if he is, um, I, I don't know, man. A lot would have to change for that to be the case, I think. But we're going to go ahead and simulate the rest of year one. I'm also recording this right after the Bengals and Ravens game on Thursday night. I just got to say that Zach Taylor is so dumb. I just don't understand. That's now two times this season against the Baltimore Ravens. He just makes no sense to me. Uh, but regardless, let's just go ahead and get into the offseason and see how we finish out. So at the end of season number one, we finished up at 2-15. and 15. Clearly, we were not very good at all, but we're right in the re-signing stage. We can go ahead and take a look at the player stats, but this will be a clear overhaul, overhaul this offseason, in my opinion. So offense was 32nd in NFL. Defensively, 2nd in NFL, not too bad. So 12-24 and 24 from Rudolph. 5-7 and seven from Will Levis. Clearly, neither one of these guys are the answer at quarterback, which we are very aware of. Uh, Tony Pollard had six touchdowns with 900 yards receiving-wise. He had uh, Calvin Ridley, 700 yards. Howard Boyd, 600. And then defensively, uh, if we take a look at that really quickly, um, sacks-wise, he had uh, eight from Jeffrey Simmons, six and a half from Harold Landry, four from Kenneth Murray. He also had six interceptions from Amani Hooker. So, well, let's just get straight into the resigning stage and see who we want to keep around because this is going to be a full-on rebuild i think i'm going to tear a lot of this down so Jerome baker i'm probably going to let go tyler bergman let go jack gibbons i'm going to let go quandry diggs i'm letting go Dylan burks i'm not going to accept the fifth year option on him he has not been very good for tennessee at all of course they traded uh aj brown to get him uh and another pick i believe so all around just has been kind of disastrous since i feel like they traded aj brown away i just think everything has gone downhill since but we're not resigning a single player we just saw, so let's just get straight into free agency. We do have $93 million in cash space, so that definitely is going to be interesting to see what we could do with that. But let's take a look at the lineup overall, as we'll have a very high draft pick and uh, looking at the lineup. So, Will Levis, QB, you got Oconquo, you got Traylon Burks, you got Calvin Ridley, um, and after that, not a whole lot going on. You have Tony Paul and Tajay Spears. Yeah, offensive line is okay. Um, it could be better. Uh, wasn't Nicholas a very high draft pick, if I'm not mistaken? Or maybe he was like in... I don't know, but he's not very good at all. So that's definitely disappointing as well. Uh, let's get straight into the defensive side of the ball. Of course, we have Jeffrey Simmons, which is a one piece that, you know, we could maybe trade away and get quite a bit for if we feel inclined to do so. The Jarius Need and then Shadobi Wuze and Roger McCreary. So the cornerback room is looking pretty solid. But two guys, you know, three guys that we could definitely trade as well if we wanted to. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and start as usual in free agency. So to me, I mean, there's a number of different things we could truly use. So there's not like one particular thing I'm going to be going after. I think for the most part, I'm just going to simply sign as many young upside players in free agency as possible. So I've made four offers here in free agency. We're going for Rashid Shahid to have someone at wide receiver opposite of Ridley. Right now we have Baron Browning who we're trying to get, but Carolina might beat us out there. We're going after Josh Uche and AJ Jackson. So we'll see how free agency ends up for us. And we do get only Josh Uche and AJ Jackson. So uh, we did not get Rashid Shahid or uh, also the other guy we're going after, which for whatever reason already escaped. All right, and also, of course, uh, Baron Browning. So... We kind of strike out of free agency, and to me, the next part is going to be making trades. So let's go take a look at Team Sowers as well to see who is making a bunch of money on this team and what we let, have left as far as contracts. So, trading Legere's need right now, I don't think it makes a ton of sense. Same thing with Jeffrey Simmons, although I was like, kind of thinking about it. 
Ouzier, probably not. So maybe I won't make any trades like I thought. Like Harold Landry was kind of rumored to be traded. We did just sign Josh Uche, so Harold Landry does become a little bit more expendable. So I guess that is one player we can probably trade. So let's just go ahead and uh, probably trade away Harold Landry. And then we can get straight into the draft after we do this. So let's go ahead and get offers for Harold Landry. So let's see what we got. So not, okay, actually some more offers popping up. So we get a six round pick in Alex Singleton. Trey Palmer in a fifth. We got Benjamin St. Juiced in a sixth and a seventh. Uh, Nolan Smith is interesting. If Philadelphia wanted like a veteran linebacker, I guess, veteran pass rusher instead of Nolan Smith. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Sign me up. I'm going to do this trade with the Eagles. We're going to get a little bit younger in this trade. Philadelphia is going to get a more experienced pass rusher. So I'm totally okay with that. Now let's head straight to the draft. So funny enough, we actually have the number one overall pick in this draft. So this will be interesting. Do we take our quarterback right now or do we take like Travis Hunter and give us like, and we could take Shador Sanders as well. We could take Cameron Ward. Like we could take a number of different players here. Jalen Miro. Uh, I do think obviously quarterback is the most important position to figure out. Uh, Travis Hunter is an absolute stud, of course, as we all know. But do I take Shador or Cam Ward is the question. I think these will be the two guys that are probably debated about as the first QB off the board. Maybe I'm mistaken. I'm not like a huge, uh, you know, obviously scout or anything. Like, I don't know a bunch. But I have gotten Cam Ward in the video recently, if I'm not mistaken. I forget which video it was. So I am going to take Shador Sanders. Not that I haven't gotten him before either. But number one overall, taking Shador Sanders feels a little weird. But at the end of the day, we need a quarterback. So I'm taking Shador Sanders number one overall. Maybe I could have taken Travis Hunter, get our QB in round two. That would have been fine as well. Maybe that was a better way to go about things. I guess we'll see if I made a mistake once we get to round two, if there's a good quarterback on the board left. So uh, we might get to that point and there is a QB, but round two, and I believe we don't have a round three pick if I'm not mistaken. So let's see if a good quarterback is still here. Carson Beck, I guess would have been all right, but um, I'm okay with, I mean, Carson Beck, I guess has some good rating. So yeah, we could have took Travis Hunter and Carson Beck. That wouldn't have been too bad, but uh, at the end of the day, I still feel good about getting uh, our quarterback figured out with Shador Sanders. But uh, we do have a good safety on the board, and we do need another one. So I'm going to go ahead and take Malachi Starks here um, and bring him in on this defense. So I like that a lot. And then assuming, like I said, we don't have a round three pick like I think. And that was a great pick. Number 14 true value. Draft him at 33. So I love that pick for us. But I'm pretty sure we don't have a third round pick because of the luxurious knee, luxurious knee trade. Uh, but let me double check. Yes, yeah, so no, no third round pick for us. So round four, we'll make the best of what we got here. Obviously, this probably won't be a very good player, but we'll see what we can do. We got a couple wide receivers on the board, which is kind of what I want to draft. I know I've gotten Kyron Lacey before. He ended up being a hidden dev. But what about Jalen Royals? Uh, a deep route, uh, D catching, C catching traffic. Uh, don't know a ton about him. I know Kyron Lacey, of course, is out of LSU. Um, we got Deion Burks out of Oklahoma. Maryland, Caden Prather. Don't know much about him either uh but i'm gonna go ahead and take him so we need another wide receiver in the building Caden prather welcome to tennessee and number 160 true value draft 97 so not a great pick overall to be honest with you not a very good off season but one thing we did get figured out is we have a quarterback of the future so at least we have that going because that's always important to figure out but there's still a lot more work to be done in this video no doubt so here's the lineup going into season number two. Of course, it's Shador Sanders starting at the quarterback spot with Paul there and Tajay Spears. Ridley still our wide receiver one. We got uh, Traylon Burke still a Conquo. We took uh, Jackson for agency. And here's the left side of the offensive line. On the defense side of the football, our free safety is a 70 overall. So that was a home run second round pick, it looks like. Uh, we have Uche, Sweat, and then Simmons on the D-line. Aduzier, uh, or sorry, Awuzie, I should say. And then Roger McCurry. So... To be honest with you, I think our defense has a chance of still being really good. It looks like it was pretty good last year. Uh, but we'll see how the offense does with Shore Sanders under center. I'm going to simulate year number two. Not expecting a whole lot. I do think we'll probably end up being pretty bad once again. Hopefully, we make the best of whatever happens in this upcoming offseason. And to my surprise, we actually made the playoffs this year at 8-9, and nine, which is kind of wild. So we won our division at 8-9, and nine, which is insane because the Texans are 5-12, and 12, which... This doesn't even make a ton of sense to me, but hey, we made the playoffs. So what can I really say? Offense, we were 22nd in the NFL and on the defensive side of the ball, uh, we were 19 in the NFL. So Shador out of the draft, 23 and 10, not too shabby. Pollard, 13 touchdowns, 800 yards. Uh, Jaquan Jackson, who I don't even know who this is, had a damn good season for us. 25 years old out of the slot, I assume. He was damn good for us. Well, uh, 
Welcome in Jaquan Jackson. I don't know what his, I mean, he might go up in development trade if I had to guess based off what the season was for him. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, 14 sacks. So love to see that. And then uh, four interceptions from Monty Hooker and four from Legereus Needs. So making the playoffs was something I didn't expect, but here we are. We get the Raiders around one who went 12 and five. So let's just go ahead and see if we can win a playoff game in this second season. I will tell you, I will be utterly shocked if we find a way to win this game. But I will say we are home, so I guess things are possible. We will go down 7-0 very early on, but we will tie it up. And we get an interception from a luxurious need, 7-10. 14-10 now. We take it back, 14-17. The fact that we're being very competitive in this game is nice. But are we going to go win it is the question. It's a tie ball game again. We get the ball with two minutes left, and we will. I thought we were going to score overtime. They don't get anything. They miss a 26-yard field goal, which feels insane. So all we need our offense to do is... I'm not going to jump in because there's just still so much work to do that there's literally no point in me jumping in. Can we go just score? And we win the game. So we're moving on to the next round. If you would have told me before the season started that we were going to go win a playoff game, I would have said you were crazy. But here we are. We're on a divisional weekend. I can't imagine whoever we face in a divisional weekend we win, though. I, I just can't imagine that happening. But I guess we'll see. So yeah, for Divisional Weekend, we now trot into Buffalo. I feel like there's probably a 1% chance, maybe even 0% chance of us coming out here and winning this in Buffalo. But I guess we'll see. We get a safety to start the game. Okay. All right. Very interesting. But the Bills will... Okay, we're playing baseball so far. It's 3-2. to two, And now it's 2-10. to ten. I mean, We can still get... Yeah, so... This is where I think it'll end. I, I mean, like I said, I really couldn't imagine we came out here and beat the Bills. That would have been insane. Guess it's not over yet. Do we get the ball back? Oh my goodness. There's a minute 49 left. I'm not going to jump in once again because do I jump in and win this game for us? Really? No, there's so much work to do. Let's just see if this team goes out and wins it. Oh my goodness. I thought we were going to win it. I don't know what just happened, but we lost it. We got in a uh, field goal range. It didn't kick a field goal. We lost. I don't know what happened, but dude, that gives me a lot of hope uh, that, you know, we got something brewing here and we aren't even close to being I like I was thinking about trading a bunch of vets away but maybe Tennessee was cooking man maybe I was all wrong in the beginning maybe we have a roster here just just go add some pieces and maybe we can go to the Super Bowl next year so we're now going into this offseason with a ton of cash base 138 million dollars exactly and the Bills went on to the Super Bowl so we almost beat the Buffalo Bills by the way which is just crazy to think about but um, I definitely want to keep a lot of these guys around. So like Arden Key, Kenneth Murray, Nicholas Petit. Actually, I probably won't worry about him. Um, Joey Sly. All right, let's just get into resigning because there is a few guys I do want to keep. Like so Raj McCreary, definitely on the wish list to kind of keep the cornerback room healthy here. So let's see if we can get Roger McCreary to come back and he's going to stick around. W. Uh, Amani Hooker. I mean, might as well, right? I mean, this defense is really solid last year. And I feel like keeping him, you know, paired with the safety we just drafted makes a ton of sense. I was honestly ready to uh, fifth year option on Peter Skaronski. I'll go and accept it. I'll, but no, I was ready and we'll accept fifth year option on Nolan Smith. I was ready to, like I said, trade pretty much every veteran away. But this has totally changed everything. I mean, the fact that we almost won that divisional game and got to the AFC Championship, we have to, you know, be convinced that we're closer than we think. I think getting Shador, I have to assume that safety that we drafted made a big impact as well. He might even be a superstar X Factor. I don't know. I could be tripping. Maybe just a superstar. Maybe just a star. But let's take a look at the lineup regardless. Because, I mean, this is still an ugly lineup. There's still so much work to do. And even after a 1,000-yard, 10-touchdown season, he didn't move up to development trade at all, which is kind of disappointing. But, uh, you know, right side of the offensive line can still use some work defensively, though. Only star. I'm a little shocked by that. I thought um, he would maybe be higher than that, but no. Um, so, cornerback rooms looks great. Linebackers could definitely be better um yeah so i think linebackers are gonna be the big focus for sure and yeah i think linebackers on defense is like the main thing we need and on the offensive side of the football it's basically you know right side of the offensive line and some weapons for shador so let's get to work so i have made four offers here in free agency and as you can see one of them is Khalil shakir we're trying to get jalen phillips as well Adafaway, and then the kobe dean but i'm getting outbidded by pretty much everybody so far so let's go ahead and throw our offer even higher on jalen phillips i'm trying to upgrade our linebacker room as much as possible so we are overpaying quite a bit but i mean we have the cast base to use so we might as well go for it so Adafaway, i'm going for Khalil shakir and the kobe dean so let's see if we get 
these four guys to sign and we get Jalen Phillips and Nicobe Dean. So we do not get Will Shakir and we don't get Odafwe, but we do get two linebackers, which is definitely something we needed. Um, Mark Andrews goes to Chicago and Khalil Shakir is like the only good receiver that was here in free and CDB, unfortunately. Um, so that really is disappointing because we need a good wide receiver really badly because Ridley, I think, has regressed a little bit. And I forgot about the offensive line, too. We need to upgrade the right side of the offensive line specifically. And we have Braden Smith or Taylor Moten here. So which one do we want is the question. Um, well, Taylor Moten seems like he'll be easier to get. So I'm going to go for him. And he will be an upgrade here on our O-line. So that's fantastic. So no uh, debate that we should get him. And then the Kobe Dean was the one guy we signed here. Uh, and now I honestly, when it comes to a, tr I mean, to me, I think we need a trade for a wide receiver. And I always think about T Higgins and I would love to get him, but man, Madden has made it so hard to trade for players. And we have a very late first round pick, which sucks. So let's see if I can offer my first for T Higgins. I don't know if they would do this Cincinnati specifically, but I do want T Higgins. If I could get him, that'd be fantastic. So my first round pick for T Higgins, what do you say? And they're close to accepting this, so we're doing this because I want to get Jador Sanders an actual weapon. So T. Higgins on a fifth doesn't get it done. Um, this is quite a bit to give up, but like I said, man, I really want T. Higgins on this team. So I don't know if T. Higgins would be worth a first in real life, obviously. He's got a lot of injury issues. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Madden's made it so complicated to make trades here. But we're trading a first, fifth, fourth, fourth for T. Higgins. We get our wide receiver here, so that was pretty easy. So welcome to Tennessee T Higgins. I de definitely think that was necessary to do. And then uh, hopefully in round two, maybe we get another wide receiver because Ridley will stick here for now because we just don't have anybody else right now, literally. And then once we get Taylor Bowden, he will move to the right guard or something along the lines of that. And defensively, we now have Jalen Phillips and the Kobe Dean, which feels really good. So love that. So yeah, this is looking like a pretty interesting team. I, again, did not think we could go compete this early but i mean last year totally changed my mind so um let's go see if we do in fact of course get taylor moton on the team that should complete the o-line let's make sure we get him and he will let's see he does sign so we get taylor moton again i guess we could sign a third wide receiver here as well so tower lockett Kadarius tony josh Naylor, john mechie we got chenault we got kj hamler you know what give me the vet tower lockett why not so he could play in the slot or whatever so let's go tower lockett uh, he could do a number of things for us and he will sign right away. So we get Tyler Lockett to be our third wide receiver. So that gives Shador some guys to throw the ball to. And now let's head to the draft for this 2026 draft class. So our first pick comes late in round two. So let's go ahead and see what is on the board for us. I'm not looking at anything specific. I'm just going to be looking at kind of best available players. So we have a couple safeties and we do have a tight end who... I have taken quite a bit and I would not mind taking this guy again because I don't love Okonkwo as our tight end going forward technically. So I'm cool with this pick. We can get a hidden dev tight end in round two to give Shador another guy to throw the ball to. So I love that for us. And let's go make this round three pick and then we'll get straight into year number three with the hopes of making it back to the playoffs. But this time being a lot better of a team. So this feels good. Uh, we have a corner Avon Terrell out of Clemson. Uh, let's take a look at what he's looking at. So B catching D zone, C man, don't love that. Uh, we have uh, Chatoviano. Uh, this is a round three pick, but he's got good zone, but not good man coverage. Okay. Wide receivers, I don't think I'm going to draft. We got McIntyre. We got a corner, you know, left in. So a lot of left in or a lot of corners on the board right now. Um, we could take Ethan Burke here, I guess. So let's take Ethan Burke for some depth here. And that will be our last pick in this draft. So uh, hidden dev, but obviously he wasn't graded great. But I'm going to go ahead and get straight into year number three. Because, I mean, like I said, I was very shocked at what we saw last year. Will we see that this year? Find out. So at the end of year three, we totally fell off compared to last year. And obviously you could probably say no duh because, you know, that third season or sorry, that second season was very fluky. I don't think we would have made it, should have made it as far as we did, uh, but we did. So we kind of had some expectations going to this season and they weren't met. We finished up at five and 12 on the season. We weren't very good. So a lot more work to be done, but I think with one more beautiful offseason, I truly do believe we could be a playoff team, maybe a contender next year. So let's take a look at the player stats. 
So offensively, 17 in NFL, which is good. And then defensively, let's take a look. You were uh, 25th, so not as good. So, ooh, Shador, not a great season out of him. Pollard, we're probably ready to go get a new running back. T. Higgins, our new addition. Only one touchdown is a little disappointing, not going to lie. Uh, Sacks-wise, you had 9.5 from Jeffrey Simmons, so still doing his thing. It's needed with six interceptions. So, let's just get straight into the offseason, and we'll see what things are looking at. So, we have $52 million in cast base, but I think that could change. No, it's still $52 million. So, let's go take a look at who is a free agent. So, we got J.C. Latham, so we could accept that fifth-year option. Tajay Spears is a free agent. Tony Pollard is a free agent. Awuzie is a free agent. Will Levis is a free agent. All right. There's really no one to resign. The only guy I might consider resigning is Tajay Spears. So let's just go ahead and give him a deal. But he's not going to be our franchise running back if I can get somebody else. But Jadobi Awuzie, we can let go because he's very old at this point. So let's get into free agency. Let's take a look at the lineup. So we are going to have a lot more work to be done. Probably need to change the playbook so our offense performs better. And then we should maybe, like I said, make the playoffs next year. So, uh, looking at this team, uh, we definitely need another wide receiver. Ridley, I mean, I'm assuming we could cut him for more money at this point. How much is he going to free up? So, uh, yeah, that's a no-brainer. We could free up $22 million in cash base. Sign me up for that. I mean, that's a no-brainer. We got to see if there's anybody else that makes sense to cut as well. Let's take a look at that. So, Kevin Ridley, to me, was a no-brainer. Cut him away. I mean, he's regressed like crazy anyway to begin with. Is there anyone else? We can cut Jeffrey Simmons, save $23 million, But, I mean, I want to keep him and Snead because we're going to go for it this year. Uh, T. Higgins, we could cut him. But, obviously, I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, there's no other obvious cuts, in my opinion. So, we're chilling with what we got right now. So, now, taking a look at the lineup. Now that we've cut Calvin Ridley again because, obviously, we only looked at the offense. So, offensively... To me, obviously, still remains that we do need another wide receiver. Maybe a couple of them. And we do need a running back. Defensively, uh, we have, okay, so a superstar safety, a superstar corner. And Legeris needs up to a superstar, uh, you know, cornerback as well. So defense still looks pretty good to me. Uh, maybe another corner wouldn't hurt. Uh, but let's go take a look at uh, free agency and see who is available to us to go sign. So I'm making three offers here in free agency. I'm going for George Kalafis, Kenny Moore, and Elton Jenkins. I want to get Kenny Moore as our third corner if possible. Just kind of replace, of course, what we had in Jadovia Wuzie. Um, and we're going to see if we get all three of these guys in free agency. I think that would be really nice. We get Elton Jenkins. We do not get Kenny Moore. What about Kalafis? Does he accept our offer? And he does. So we get Kalafis, which feels good. Uh, Sam Laporte was sitting here, which was interesting. Uh, but yeah, no corner from Kenny Moore. We don't really have good wide receivers here either. Our cornerback group isn't the worst, so I'm fine with what we got right now. But yeah, wide receivers, they just still don't exist in free agency, unfortunately. They just haven't really been here for us to take. So we'll have a very early pick. Maybe there's a good wide receiver to take on the board. So let's just get straight into the draft at this point and see what is available. This is an auto-generated draft class because we're in the year 2027 at this point. Um, so let's just see who's here and we'll take whatever we feel best fits the team but at the end of the day i do think this first round pick needs to be a wide receiver and honestly if there's no good ones maybe i trade the pick for a wide receiver so we're picking at number five overall so let's see what is available to us at number five we got a quarterback going off the board and no wide receivers have gone off so far but again we got to make sure that there is a good wide receiver taking the first place and so far i'm seeing absolutely none in sight um, the first one is down here with uh, Dominic Barksdale out of Penn State, who has um, not really impressing me. So I might trade my fifth overall pick for a wide receiver. Give Shador his best chance as possible. Go win a Super Bowl next year. All right, funny enough, we're trading for Travis Hunter. We're trading the fifth overall pick for Travis Hunter from Cleveland. So... Um, I didn't even know if they would accept this or not, but they did. I mean, obviously we wanted to, we low key would have taken Travis Hunter number one overall. We just, we really pretty much just, you know, reunite Travis Hunter and Shador Sanders. So yeah, I'm feeling okay about that. Uh, Shador still, or Travis Hunter is still very much on his rookie contract as well. So it's almost like we got Shador and, uh, Travis Hunter in that same draft years ago, I guess, if that makes sense. So I'm very okay with what we just did there. Let's go take a look at what else we got. So there's a bunch of quarterbacks on the board. We're not taking a QB, obviously. We got another linebacker, which these guys actually look pretty good. Another wide receiver. I mean, another wide receiver wouldn't hurt. So let's see what we got here. But he does not look good at all. So we will pass on that. 
So let's take a look at these linebackers because we got Marquez Cannon, uh, who looks solid, might be a pick for us, and then Fitz Simmons. Which one would we rather have? I definitely want the other guy. So we're going to take Marquez Cannon, and this will be our last pick. I'm going to let my assistant GM take care of the rest. We got the guy I wanted, which was uh, Travis Hunter, and that was a terrible pick anyway. So yeah, it's time to let the assistant GM take over. Now I'll see you guys in year number four, where I'm ready to go on a run and win the damn Super Bowl. So here's the lineup going into season number four. It's Shador, Tajay Spears, Travis Hunter, T. Higgins, Okonkwo, Moten, Skaronsky, Cushenberry, Elton Jenkins, and J.C. Latham. On the defensive side of the football, we have Starks, Nolan Smith, Gray, N'Kobe Dean, Jalen Phillips, Amani Hooker, Roger McCurry, George Karloffis, Sweat, Jeffrey Simmons, and Legereus Need. So without further ado, let's simulate year number four, and hopefully we make the damn playoffs and go on to win the Super Bowl. So at the end of the season, we do make the playoffs at 11 and six, but funny enough and unfortunately enough, we get the Kansas City Chiefs in round one who went nine and eight. I've never seen the Chiefs finish that low. Very interesting. But offense, we are 15th in the NFL, which is great. And on the defense side of the football, let's take a look. We were 26th in the NFL. So uh, 43 and eight from Shore Sanders this year, 1100 yards from Tajay Spears and 13 touchdowns. Uh, Jaquan Jackson, once again, just becomes the guy here. But Travis Hunter and Tekins definitely got involved too. But this man has been a stud throughout the video so far. Uh, sacks wise, he had seven and a half from Simmons, six and a half from Phillips, and then six and a half, and then six. He had four interceptions for Roger McCreary, three from Snead, and three from Starks. All right. Chiefs around one. What could possibly go wrong? Let's just jump straight into it. So here goes nothing facing off against the Kansas City Chiefs in wildcard weekend. And they're going to go up three to zero on us. And we will respond with a touchdown. That's a great thing to see. Can we go score again? We get a field goal blocked. Okay. And then we go down and score off the blocked field goal. Very interesting. Or they had a field goal blocked, I should say. 17 to 10. And the Chiefs will tie it 17 to 17. We tie or we take the lead back. And then the Chiefs tie it with 48 seconds left on the clock. So 48 seconds left. We have um, a bunch of time to go at least get us in field goal range or whatever we want to do. Let's see what we can make happen here. So um, I'm going to go and take the underneath here. Tajay Spears is going to get around the linebacker, and we got ourselves a first down. Riley Patterson is the kicker. We just got to give him a field goal range, and we can win this game and move on to divisional weekend, get back to where we were, uh, back, you know, back from season number two. All right, so let's see if we can uh, get T. Higgins going over the middle, potentially. They are going to blitz me, uh, but we do have A instead. So we're going to go ahead and take Okonkwo here. That will be our first timeout. You, our Chiefs are going to start calling their timeout, so... Uh, we're okay with that. I mean, we can start just running this thing if we want to. Uh, but uh, so far, you know what? I'm just going to... We got T. Higgins on an out, Travis Hunter on an out, or we could take the middle. I'm going to run this ball because I know the Chiefs are going to call a timeout. Uh, just kidding. It didn't let me run it. So, you know what? We'll just take that out route that we were looking at. And we'll just get one step closer. And now we can run the football. All right. So, Half back inside zone and let's give the ball off to Tajay Spears and let's see if we can get a first down here and maybe we can get more. Maybe. Okay. So they're going to call. No, they're not going to call timeout this time. And did I get, uh, I'm going to call my timeout 22 seconds left. They decided not to call timeout. So let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Um, you know what? Low key. I kind of like the idea of play action cross here. Now, I don't know if this is going to open up, but I'm looking. Ooh, they may. I'm looking for T. Higgins. I couldn't get the ball off. All right. Let's just kick our field goal. They'll have 18 seconds left in the clock. So um, let's just kick our field goal. We'll play defense. We take the lead. There's only seven seconds left. So, I mean, all we really need to do is just play coverage. And assuming they don't get in field goal range in one play in under seven seconds, we should be moving on to the next round. So let's see um they're going to get it off and as long as nobody pis this game is over doom or boom no pi we're moving on to divisional weekend so going from the chiefs who are nine and eight to playing the cincinnati bengals who went 12 and five so this one's gonna be a little bit tougher although it's usually the chiefs are like the final boss but we find ourselves down seven to zero early on to the bengals but we respond with a field goal and now we get the ball back and can we go score off this we do 10 to 7 we get the ball out of half can we go take the 17 no, 10 to 14. What about now? We're going to take the lead back at 17 to 14. And we once again find ourselves in position 
to go try to win the game. I was able to, you know, kind of get it over on the Chiefs. We were able to move the ball pretty easily on them. So let's see if we can do the same thing against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to start this drive with a run play, though, because we do have the two-minute warning that's about to stop the clock. And that's going to be a really nice run to start this drive. I think that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Uh, actually, we might be able to get one more playoff. Sh screw it. Why not? Let's run this again. And that's going to get us, you know, a little five yards. We'll take it. So we do need a touchdown. A field goal does pretty much nothing at this point. So I'm going to look for this zig route. I absolutely love zig routes with Jaquan Jackson. Let's see if that gets open. If not, we can look somewhere else. So zig is there. I love these zig routes, man. I love them so much. Okay. So uh, that's one step closer to getting in range with what we want to do. Um, but I feel confident. Actually, no, we're not going to run the ball. Let's go bench return, and let's see if we get Travis Hunter underneath. I think they are going to play off of him, so Travis Hunter uh, is going to get out of bounds. All right, second and two. I'm moving the ball. Like I said, man, we're just dicing him up, dicing him up. All right, Okonkwu, this is now five wide. We have nobody in the backfield. So let's just see what opens up here. Do we like anything? We like Okonkwu in the middle. We just keep moving this football. Just keep on moving the football. I'm not going to use any of my timeouts because um, the Bengals have... Uh, plenty of time if they want to use theirs they can use them go to drive smash and let's look for whatever opens up t higgins in the middle or we take the underneath i'm gonna oh actually oh i'm so glad i get that thrown away i kind of kind of stuttered for a second there i was looking to take the middle route i decided against it and then it was like too late to go where anywhere else to be honest so we're gonna go four verts again and we're gonna see what opens up so we have T. Higgins for a touchdown, and that is going to be a touchdown. So now we just got to make sure the Bengals don't get in field goal range. So let's see if we can stop them from getting field goal range. So let's play some coverage here, man, shall we? Um, we're going to be using the Kobe Dean, and they still have Jamar Chase, who just went absolutely berserk against the Bengals. Oh, I just... Okay, not a great start of this drive. I'm just out here selling. I was distracted, but jo Jamar Chase, by the way, just saw my hand for a second again. Uh, three touchdowns and like 200 something yards bro went crazy man i don't know why he always goes off against baltimore he always does dude it's like clockwork i guess so um yeah that's gonna get him in field goal range i saw that coming so now i'm gonna make sure they don't get a touchdown because they are dicing us up right now i can't blitz i feel like but maybe we do bring a blitz i'm gonna bring a blitz because we have all three of our timeouts the so worst case scenario he dices us up and we makes us pay and I have time, so that was a great, that was great. So they're gonna call their timeout. And I'm gonna blitz again, because like I said, worst case scenario, he scores a touchdown on us. I feel like I, I'm confident enough to go score on them. So let's see if they're gonna run it again. I wanna take him out of field goal range, and that's gonna get him. All right, so they're gonna call their last timeout. It's third and eight. They're running it with Chase Brown. I'm just gonna once again just go after him, man. Um, get a TFL or something, that'd be great um 20 seconds left for them to run Ooh, play action i get a oh my goodness you guys sold holy moly you guys try to be fancy and you you paid for it man we're moving on to the afc championship because the bengals tried to throw it over the top what a dumb decision what a dumb freaking decision but you know what i thank you for it let's go let's get to the afc championship and in this AFC Championship, we get our divisional opponent, the Houston Texans. So, you know, the stakes could not be higher. Whoever wins goes to the Super Bowl. Division rivals here. Let's see how this goes, man. So we are at home for this one as well. So that gives us an advantage. And we do nothing on our first drive, and Houston is going to take the lead. But we are going to respond with a touchdown. So we're not going to go home empty-handed so far. And we're going to tie it before half. And the Texans do not score in their first drive at a half. But we do take the field goal lead. It's 21 17. If we go take the lead back, we do 21 24. And we get the stop we're looking for. So all we need is a first down, and we're going to the Super Bowl. Holy moly, this is amazing. This run has been crazy. So let's see if we can finish this run in style. I'm going to stretch this with short or Tajay Spears. I'm not going to get a bunch of yards on this, but I'm going to get like two. So they're going to call their first timeout. Um, I'm not going to stretch it again. We're just going to run it up the middle this time around. And if, not, and if I don't like anything, you know, low key, we could get fancy here and play action them. I'm going to see if Okonkwu gets open. I actually think he might. He is there. Okonkwu, first down. And they're going to call their second timeout. 
that is ballsy but that is exactly what we wanted and we need uh i mean i think this game is all but over but if we get one more first down it's definitely over they might have no i don't think there's any time left in the clock so i could have just kneeled this but that's a first down and then some that is your ball game we are going to the super bowl now in the Super Bowl, we are going to be playing against the San Francisco 49ers who've gotten here a couple of times as of late and have disappointed every single time they've gotten here. So they're looking to win this time around. Let's see if we can make sure they are disappointed again though. And they are going to start with a three to zero lead, but we are going to respond with a touchdown W and then they will respond with a field goal. So we still have the lead right now. And now they get the uh, ball out of half and we get a stop and complete pass thrown away on fourth and one. It looks like and we'll take the 14 to six lead. And we stopped them again. And that is your ball game. We won the Super Bowl 6 to 14 to end the video. I didn't even need to jump in. Very low scoring game. All that matters, though, is we're going home with the Super Bowl trophy. We get Shador and Travis Hunter. He missed together here in Tennessee. We get them a Super Bowl trophy, which is just amazing. A Lombardi trophy to be specific. But yeah, beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful way to end the video. You know, once we made it in the year two of the playoffs and almost got out of divisional weekend, I knew there was something here that I wasn't even expecting, but it's so cool that we have gotten it done. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.